Civilization means life in cities. It means large populations with great ceremonial buildings. It means writing. And all these things are found for the first time on Earth, here in this ferocious landscape of South Iraq, Old Sumer. Here was the first law, the first science, the first war. And now, what remains is a stark warning to our pride in the human achievement, for this is all that's left of the world's first cities. Civilization was born on the banks of two rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates. Mesopotamia, as the Greeks called it, the land between the two rivers, had few other natural resources. No stone, no wood or precious metals, only water and a rich alluvial soil with which a hard-working people could transform a land of scarcity into a land of plenty. Another key quality of civilization is continuity or rootedness. The old towns of Iraq are the oldest continuously inhabited on earth. And it was to places like this, Tel Afa, in the 19th century, that Western explorers came for the first time looking for origins in the land which the Bible said was the cradle of the human race. Here at Tel Afa, at the dawn of Mesopotamian archeology, span in 1846, the English excavator Austin Layard, famous for his discoveries at the cities of Nineveh and Nimrud, climbed up here to the top of the citadel one evening. And as the sun set, he says, I looked out and counted over a hundred mounds out there throwing their long and darkening shadows across the plain. Each of those mounds had built up over millennia with the accumulated debris of human settlements. The one on which this citadel is built has more than 50 feet of debris extending back 6,000 years. Perhaps nowhere, as here in Iraq, is there such a continuity. And some of those cities, out there in the plain to the south, were among the most famous in the history of the world. Ur of the Chaldees, Nineveh, Babylon. Source of some of the greatest tales in our culture. The creation, the flood, the Garden of Eden, the Tower of Babel. Those stories all come from the magical landscape of Iraq's deep south. Here on the edge of the great alluvial plain of Sumer is a wild and beautiful marshland where the Tigris and Euphrates meet. This was the biblical Garden of Eden. Up to the very eve of the Gulf War, it was still possible to enter this world and see a way of life preserved for thousands of years since long before civilization, the Marsh Arabs. The Marsh Arab villages look much as the first settlements must have done, man-made islands in freshwater lagoons where they still live by fishing, raising water buffalo, cutting the reed beds and cultivating the rich soil along the shores and levees. Their reed houses, some nearly a hundred feet long, are still built in the same fashion as was depicted 5,000 years ago in the art of Sumer. In this world of almost limitless potential, the book of Genesis says the first cities arose in the beginning when God let dry land rise from the water. And in the beginning, said the Sumerian myths, was Eridu. 
Legend said this was the mound of creation, the first land which arose from the primal sea at the beginning of time. Here was a sacred shrine which preceded the first cities. At the root of civilization is the temple. Eridu is lonely, windswept and abandoned today. But it was one of the most famous places in the history of Mesopotamia. Not only did the Sumerians believe that this was the site of the mound of creation, they thought that here kingship, that is political society, first came down to earth, and that here the arts of civilization were initially developed. It originally stood on a great sea of fresh water stretching out to the south, the Apsu. And the great temple here, the most famous shrine in Sumer, was named after it, Apsu. Named after that primeval ocean of sweet water out of which all human life and all natural life came. So they believed. And in fact, when the archaeologists dug deep into the temple hill, they discovered around the time of 5000 BC, a little sand mound surrounded by a reed fence with a tiny chapel on it, marking the site of that mound of creation. Hard as it may seem in this blasted landscape, but we're in the area of the original Garden of Eden. For what the Bible calls paradise, Eden, was simply the Sumerian word Edin, the wild grassland of the south, the natural landscape before the arrival of the city. And picking over the debris of paradise, it's hard not to see the psychological truth of the Bible story, that the very beginning of our ascent to civilization was also the fall, when we tasted the fateful fruit of the tree of knowledge, the means by which we would become masters of the earth, and yet eventually gain the power to destroy it and ourselves. Truly a devil's bargain. Sumerian myths also tell how the arts of civilization which originated here in Eridu would bring both joy and sorrow. This, they believed, was what the gods passed on from here to future ages 